This is a special report from Kelloland Media Group. Good afternoon, I'm Don Jorgensen. The USD Coyote women are the Summit League champions after defeating the SDSU Jackrabbits. Kelloland Sports Director Sean Bauer has been at the Denny Sanford Premier Center throughout the tournament. He joined into the NCAA tournament. Well, it was a tight game at halftime. Coyotes clinging to a one point lead, but they kind of built an early lead there in the third quarter, leading by seven, and then just never gave it back as they are your Summit League tournament champions. Hannah Shervin with a game high 19 points. Chloe Lamb with 17 as those fifth year seniors playing in their final Summit League tournament game going out on top. For South Dakota State, it was a bit of a shooting slump. They shot less than 25% from the field for the game, an uncharacteristic shooting performance from them. But part of that's, you know, got to give credit to the Coyotes defense there. But it was a good game, and we got the trophy celebration coming behind me. I'm going to step off cam so we can kind of see some of the stuff going on. They're currently announcing the all tournament team I believe is players from both these teams and there's Maya Sellen South Dakota State redshirt junior conference player of the year last year she uh, came back got healthy at the end of the year playing her best ball finishing as runner-up in her first Summit League tournament action in two years Sellen though only had five points on the game Next 19 points, 11 rebounds in the game. All tournament team member once again joining her as you heard it there, Chloe Lamb, the Oneida native, Sully Buttes grad, and conference player of the year this year, an all tournament team member. Lamb had a career high 33 in the semifinals, 17 points in today's game to go along with three rebounds. There are four members of the tournament team. As for the Coyotes, they shot, uh, you know, 38% on the day, 41, almost 42% from three. You know, not a, not a great shooting performance on their part, and that's just these two teams are so good defensively, they challenge you. For the second straight year, I believe she's your tournament MVP, so conference player of the year, conference tournament MVP. Quite a way to finish her time playing in the state of South Dakota, of course. They'll get to the NCAA tournament, so they'll play somewhere else. We still have the trophy celebration coming up. We still have, you know, medals to hand out, nuts, nets to kit, cut. And, uh, yeah. A lot of red still remaining. Most of the blue has evacuated. It was a packed house in here, fans. Up. Filling the lower bowl and many in the upper deck, and just a great environment for a women's basketball game all day long. Sean, D Don Jorgensen here. Can you hear me? Yeah, Don. Hey, Sean, uh, I know there was some talk about no matter who won this tournament, there might be a two team bid into the NCAA. Is that still a possibility? Yes. Yes, that's still a very, you know, realistic possibility. We'll have to see, obviously, you know, what other automatic bids are earned, but the Jackrabbits were in the top. I think there were 33 in the net as of yesterday. Net rankings, a formula the NCAA uses to kind of tier teams uh, across all conferences. Um, so South Dakota State still has a good chance. You know, they went 17-1 and in regular season play and conference action. And then, you know, Two and one here. They're only lost two, only lost two USD over the past couple months. So they'll have a good shot. And if they do, that would be three times in the last four years that both programs are going to the tournament. So it just tells you, you know, how remarkable these two programs really are. Yeah, and the, the caliber of basketball here in South Dakota, um, it ranks right up there. It's fun to watch. You had a front row seat to this game. And given the fact that USD and SDSU had so much offensive firepower in the first two games, were you a little surprised at how they kind of struggled in the opening half? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I think there's always nerves, you know, when you get in front of this many people. I don't care how many times you've played in it. I think any athlete will tell you that there's always nerves. 
And then, you know, these are the top two defensive teams in the conference, and they showed for a reason. I mean, this is I, maybe would expect a little more, but because they're both so good defensively, I guess it wasn't all that surprising, though. I think both teams will say they probably missed a lot of shots that they felt like they normally make. Yeah, and there was a lot of physical play that first half. I got to watch some of it, and you could just tell that the, the outside shots were not falling, and they were struggling from the inside as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that was kind of it was kind of a struggle offensively for both teams all all game long. I think Hannah Shervin, you know, she was six of fourteen. That's you know nearly fifty percent. A lot of hers inside. You know, she, other than her, no one really inside really got in any sort of rhythm. You know, Maya Sellen is talking about her. She picked up two quick fouls there in the first quarter, so hard for her to get into any sort of rhythm for the Jacks when you happen to sit on the bench to not pick up that third. Um, Coyotes, I mean, Liv Corn Gable, four of eight from the field, two of three from deep, so that's pretty to kind of lead the Coyotes there in shooting percentage wise. So, yeah, it was a bit of a struggle, but, you know, both teams, like I said earlier, both teams very good defensively. And Sean, you know a lot about both these programs, and USD, it's kind of sweet justice for them given the fact that they made the NCAA tournament, but it was canceled during the start of the pandemic. You got to feel pretty good for USD, the women's basketball team. I'm sure, I'm sure they do. I mean, they, they got to go last year, up, but last year wasn't the same. You know, they, they didn't get to play in this environment. They didn't get to go to, you know, a true NCAA tournament. It was at a neutral site down there in San Antonio, kind of in a bubble. So I think, yeah, you know, two years ago, they were up on this stage, but then everything was taken away from them. So for, for those that were a part of it, you know, the Hannah Shervins, Chloe Lambs, Liv Corn Gables, who were big key members of that 2020 team, I'm sure getting to celebrate in front of the fans and then getting to go to an NCAA tournament with fans also allowed will, uh, will sure help. And Sean, what do we know about selection then? When is that going to take place and when will we know? Yeah, I'm not 100% uh, sure on the exact time, but it is selection Sunday. I believe the men's show will be first and then the women's show Sunday night. I could be wrong, it might be Monday, but I'm almost positive it's Sunday, so they'll learn their draw. Uh, last projections had USD as an eight or a nine seed, but that was that as an at large. You got to wonder as an automatic qualifier if that bumps them up to a seven and, and maybe a six, where you know you get into that, they can get up to a six. You know that's the seed that the Jackrabbits had when they went to the Sweet 16. So if you can kind of carve out that path, maybe, but should find out on I believe Sunday. But uh, might, someone might have to double check to see if it was Monday. Well, I hope you have some help out there to clean up all that confetti before the next game. Yeah, we got plenty of people here to clean it up. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's been a great, great day and great environment. Great atmosphere out there. I just love it. I think I read somewhere over 8,500 fans plus. Yeah, I never, I never got to see the exact uh, attendance number because I was getting ready to come out here. But I would say, yeah, well over 8,000. It was a very and festive we're gonna try crowd. And get some of the coaches and players here in a little bit, so I'll keep you updated there. Well, the USD women moving on to the big dance. Congratulations to, to them. And you got to feel a little bit sad for SDSU as well because both these teams, just such great programs. You just feel like either one of them could have represented South Dakota very well in the NCAA tournament. Cut down the nets here. Um, as you can see up there, Summit League champion poster up behind on the glass there. Pretty soon the players will be cutting down those nets. Now this year, a little different than other years, they actually put uh, these fences in front of both the student sections and that uh, to prevent them from storming the court. So a little different celebration without everyone out here, but I don't think the players care either way. And uh, actually we have Hannah Shervin now joining us live. Hannah? How good does it feel to be an all-tournament champion once again? It feels amazing. Uh, I can't describe a better ending for us as seniors in the Summit League. Yeah, no, you guys you got to win it last year, but there wasn't any fans there. How much sweeter does it make this one, knowing that you got to play in this environment and celebrate here? Our fans are everything, so having them here, I mean, it makes the biggest difference in the world. There are times in the game 
one where they got us going and fueled us to keep going, so huge difference. Yeah, what was the key there in the third quarter? You guys kind of built that separation and then you never really gave it back to them. I think our defense, for sure. Locking in, not following, you know, just playing honest, good defense. All right, so now an NCAA tournament automatic qualifier. Does that mean, you know, next step you guys got to win that game? Yes. I mean, you want to win every game, but that's been our goal for a long time, so that's what we want to do. And two years ago when you guys were in this building celebrating, you didn't get to have that tournament. And uh, now I guess, how, do, how does that kind of compare knowing that you know this time around you're going to get to go? It's, uh, it's almost full circle and we got to do it for those girls that, you know, thought they had a tournament to end out their senior year and they didn't get it. So I think there's a lot behind us for this next game. Yeah, four seniors on the team, but for you, Chloe and Liv, you know, three players have been a lot of times 3,000 point scorers. What were you guys kind of saying to each other, you know, when the clock's winding down and you're celebrating? Just, uh, gosh, I don't even know. Just smiling, enjoying the moment. Um, this is what we worked for all summer, all year. I mean, our whole career is for a moment like this. Thanks, Hannah. Congratulations. Thank that was Hannah Shervin. She had 19 points. I believe 11 boards in the game for the double-double. All tournament team and now heading back to the NCAA tournament. Just tell me about the Sean's gonna get show, as you can see, that's Kyle Watson, former Rapid City Stevens Raider, cutting down the net. We have another net, though. Watson, yeah, we'll have. Come on, guys. What's are they hard questions? No, no. Okay. All right, we got yep, we got Kyle Watson joining us, uh, a Rapid City Stevens Raider. Didn't get to really play in last year's tournament, so how much fun was this one? It was a great experience to be out here in front of all these fans because we didn't get to have them last year, so it's definitely something new and fun to be a part of. Take me through, you know, those final minutes. You guys can kind of, you know, taste the victory. What was that like? Um, you know, we could feel it coming, but we knew that we had to still focus on the game, get the stops that we needed to secure the win, so just staying focused. And then defensively, I mean, you guys kind of held them in check all game long. You guys did a great job on Maya Sell, and what was the key to that? Um, well, we know that they can really score the ball, whether that be outside or inside, so just making it as difficult as possible for them to get shots up. So. All right, well, thanks, Kaya. Congratulations. Thank you. And that was Kaya Watson. And we got, and joining us now will be head coach Don Plitzewite. So Don, yeah, yeah. tournament champion for the third straight year. Um, how's this one feel? Yeah, it's pretty special. You know, it's really hard. It's what? really, really hard to get to this point in time. And you have three super seniors that came back to get to this moment. And just because you want to get to this moment doesn't guarantee you that you can get to this moment. They put an awful lot of hard work and effort in. And I'll tell you what, to our young ladies who battled and competed to get us ready for this game and then played in this game, outstanding job. To our coaches who uh, really spent a lot of time and effort getting us ready, appreciate all the things that they do. And to our fans, that was kind of fun. It got a little loud in here at times. That was a great, that we appreciate our fans and what they do. Yeah, let's talk about that because last year, you know, it was just so quiet. I mean, you had, you had the coyote moms making noise, but this year you have 8,000 people. I mean, how much, how enjoyable the experience and how much does that mean for women's basketball to get that? Yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting because even at the end of the game when we knew we were going to have an opportunity to cut down the nets and the confetti comes down it was a lot different than last year when it was just 20 of us on the court together so this moment for them is something that will be in their minds for the rest of their lives this is why you why you come to school why you want to play to have this kind of a moment so i'm really happy for them that they get it yeah. chloe lamb tournament mvp to add to her conference player of the year had a career high yesterday does she ever just not impress you? Chloe is so smart. You know, she's asking questions during the game about things the other team is running and trying to coach her teammates for us and do all those type of things. You know, I, she's she's a really, really special young lady. Although I will say, I thought Liv Corn Gable got us to this game with how she played yesterday and when everyone else, all the others were in foul trouble. And so I just think it's it's more than one kid, but I'll tell you what, Chloe was pretty special. Yeah, and that, that senior group, four of them, and you have 350 or players. How, how important have they been to this success? 
success? Boy, it's they set the tone in everything that they do. You know, from how they approach the summer to how they approach practice to how they talk to each other during the course of the game to at one of the end last timeouts, Chloe took over the timeout. So they, they are kind of running the show, and but they know and they understand it means something to them. It's a they a player run organization in that regard. It's something that they have they want really bad. So it's, Thank you. Thank you, Don. Congratulations. Thank you. That was Don Plitzoy, USD women's basketball coach, celebrating her third straight Summit League title. And uh, we'll have plenty more coverage coming up later on Kelloland Sports at 5, 6, and 10, playing with the USD women, so make sure to tune along with that. Reporting live from the Premier Center, Sean Bauer, Kelloland Sports. All right, great job, Sean. Thank you very much. Once again, the USD Coyote women are the Summit League champions and will now play in the NCAA tournament. We're going to have more reaction and highlights from today's championship game, as well as the latest from the men's final game tonight on Kelloland News at 5, 6, and 10, as well as on Kelloland.com.